All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris, a.k.a. Barn on 11970, and I thank you guys for taking the time to watch this very important video. This is going to be a long video. It's going to be a detailed video. I promise the people, especially the newer people, that if you are patient and listen to this entire video, you're going to come out of this with a different perspective of what's going on and why it's going on. And I realized one of my gifts is the ability to be able to teach people things to make it so they can understand it. And I always found that the biggest problem people have, even that are trying to learn this, is there are plenty of people out there with a lot of intelligence, with a lot of information. But if they don't know how to present it in a way that you'll understand, you'll get frustrated, you'll give up. It's almost like, for example, if you were a person, let's say, entering ninth grade and you're about to learn your choice of whatever language you want to learn, and you decide that you want to learn French. Now, you don't speak a word of French. And on your first day of class, you sit down, the teacher comes in, and he teaches you by talking to you only in French. You don't understand the language, so you're going to have no idea what he's talking about. And it doesn't matter how much he yells, what big words he uses, how much he tries to describe it to you. If he doesn't allow you the ability to understand it, eventually you're just going to say, well, he's not helping me at all. He's saying a bunch of words I don't understand, so forget it, I give up. And I find a lot of people have that problem. Some people won't admit that, or they'll only partially understand. And that's the mistake I've been even making in the beginning of all of this information that I've been learning. The first couple of years, you learn bits and pieces. So if you don't know the whole piece of the puzzle or the majority of the puzzle, you start sounding almost crazy. It's like, for example, like I said, with the person learning French, let's say he were he learns a word here and there, but not enough to formulate a sentence. And he just starts regurgitating certain words that don't form a, a, a sentence. People are going to have no idea what he's talking about. So they make this puzzle so hard that even if you know bits and pieces, if you don't know the whole thing or the pattern of, of even why, you'll never get it and it's gonna sound crazy. So now I understand with all the knowledge that I have over years of working with very intelligent people who have helped me and me having to figure it out and trying to put the puzzle pieces together, I can understand how a lot of us sound almost ridiculous in the beginning because we're trying to be helpful, but we don't have all the information and if you only know bits and pieces, you're not going to sound like anything that's comprehensible. So now that I'm at a level where I'm comfortable enough, I'm going to answer some questions from a subscriber who has some very good questions. And then I'm going to go into the whole details of what happened, why it happened, how it affects you, and how you can get out of this corrupt system. Because if you're here watching this video, especially if it's the first time, You've always had it in your mind that things are corrupt. You've heard things here and there, but you never knew why or how. I'm going to do that for you. But first, I'm going to ask this person, um, answer a couple of his questions. And I wrote down what he asked. Uh, his name is Shafe Studios, LLC. Um, question number one, is it common for countries to be corporations? Okay, very important question. Every country pretty much on the planet I can't guarantee if every one of them, but I know the major ones, and that's one of the reasons why our country is trying to attack so many others. The majority of countries are corporations. Now, we have to understand what a corporation is so you understand it, because his questions originally arose from my video I made last night, how I found the DC code that says the United States is a corporation. Now, when you think this is where the deception starts, it's all in wording. If you don't understand ter the terminology and legal definitions and codes, they are going to trick you with what they call hidden in plain sight. In other words, you'll see something, not pay attention to it because you just think it's just something out of the ordinary, when in law, it means something different. So th the fact that you asked the question is really good because it'll be easy for you to understand what I'm about to say. Because your name is Shafe Studios LLC. Well, LLC means Limited Liability Corporation, which means you've incorporated that business name. So with that being said, when I say the definition, and I'll get into further detail about this stuff later on, that 
The United States is a corporation. I'm not talking about the landmass. And if if I say the word United States, people think of the country. That's not the case. But I'm going to show you right now. And write this down. And I'm going to have a lot of stuff that um, you can interact with, you can verify, you can check. I'm going to be working with a Black's Law Dictionary. I'm going to be working with the Constitution. I'm going to be giving uh, DC codes. So you might want to pause this video, get some pen and paper handy, uh, because every video I've made for the past two months is pretty much going to be in this video. So everything is combined in one video. I'm going to make it very easily explainable. So you will come out of this knowing more than you did. So this is going to be a long video, but I ask you to be patient. Please share this because YouTube has been silencing my video and other people's videos, keeping this stuff out. All right. So what is a corporation? Now, since Shafe asked the question and he has uh, his name, Shafe Studios Incorporated, a corporation is not a business. It's not a place. It's not anything physical. Right here, it says, and forgive the handwriting, Shafe Studios. That's the corporation. It's just the name. You registered. You paid to have this name incorporated. It's registered. And they gave you a certificate back acknowledging the fact. And it would be, I wrote it in, in uh, mostly lowercase, but it'll be in all capital letters. Now, I know people make fun of all capital letters, but all you have to do is ask a lawyer that is involved and or at least knows about corporate law. In law, Anything that's written out in all capital letters is a corporation. Now, again, hidden in plain sight, you think, oh, what are letters have to do with anything? It has to do with symbolism. We, we as a society, not just our country, has been majority of people uneducated. In other words, the majority of people throughout history couldn't even read and write. So how do you get people that cannot read and write to understand laws that are passed down from either the church or a king, monarch, etc. Well, you can't write down the laws because if you can't read and write, the people won't understand them. So the majority of the history of, of humans, they use symbolism as a way to show people what to do and what not to do. And even people who couldn't read and write could understand. Now, I'll give you a prime example. Now, obviously, this hasn't been used in the past. We can use this for present time. If you are driving in your car and you, you come across in an intersection and you see an octagon-shaped sign on a pole that's red. Now, let's just say it didn't have the word S-T-O-P in it. You know that that means stop. Just the sign itself, you would know that. So you stop. Now, let's use an example where it doesn't have words. If you have a um, you're about to walk into a restaurant and on the door it shows a cigarette with a circle and a line through it what does that mean well that means no smoking now it doesn't say no smoking if you're driving in your car you come to an intersection and all of a sudden you see a colored light go from green to red what do you do well you stop it didn't tell you to stop it didn't say the word stop but you know the symbolism of going from green to the color red means red means the stop. If you have a bottle on it that has a skull and crossbones, that means that it is poison. Now, here's the thing where ignorance is no excuse. If you didn't know that that bottle and that symbol meant poison, and if you drink it, you could die. So not knowing symbolism can be very dangerous. So this, the capital letters, I think it's called Capitus Dominicus. I'm not sure of the, the, the actual Latin name, but this dates back to all the way to the Roman Empire, where they passed laws that show when you're, anything is incorporated, it is in all capital letters. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it always has to be that way. That's another way that they can trick you. So when you say that there with the word United States, People automatically assume that means the continent of America. It does not. The corporation here. And the reason it doesn't have to be in all capital letters, 
as far as the law definition, and I just recently discovered this, in the DC Code, they actually say, and the DC Code is Title 28-302, subsection 15, A, B, and C. They actually say in the code that the United States is a corporation and they don't put it in all capital letters. So that's something new. Okay. So when you think of North America or America, you think of the country. They've tricked you into assuming that this is the country. This is the same as this. It is nothing more than a incorporated name. So when I say, or other people say, that Canada, Australia, England, what have you, United States is a corporation. People that don't know what's going on and don't know the legal terminology assume that that means the country itself. It doesn't. Now let's get into your other question, and I'm going to go further into detail explaining this stuff, so... Hold on to everybody else. I just want to answer the questions really quick, and then I'm going to go and really boil down what's going to be happening and what you're going to learn and the deceit. Okay, so number two, what does what does it change, the fact that the country's corporation? Well, since you know about corporations, and I'm sure other people know about corporations, I'm, I'm going to explain it in a way that's going to help you understand it a little bit further. Now, what is... A public corporation, what does a public corporation have have or the ability to have that, let's say, for example, a small business cannot have? Well, a public corporation can have shareholders. They can issue stock, which means if you own stock in a company, that means you are a partial owner. So the fact that the United States that Canada, Australia, England, again, all other countries, they write a corporate name, and that's the corporation, not the landmass. Just the name is the corporation. Well, since we are under the jurisdiction of the United States, the corporation, well, since it's been incorporated, there are owners, there are people who have stock in the corporation. Since I will, and I will get into the legal definitions of person, if you are labeled a person, you are also a corporation. If you are listed as a citizen, you are also a corporation. Again, I'll get into that deeper. So if you're a corporation, you have owners. You are stock. Now, I don't mean you, the physical person. Again, I'm going to get into this later on so you can understand how they've deceived and tricked us into legal slavery. And I'm going to go into definitions that you can all look up yourself. One of the things I recommend is a Black's Law Dictionary, at least what I would say, either the fourth or fifth, fifth editions, because the newer editions, they're trying, they're seeing that people are catching on. They're trying to change things. Um, you could look up DC codes. And again, I'm going to give that information. Um, I'm going to be talking about things straight out of the Constitution and actually break them down so you can understand what they mean. They're not just words. There's legal terms called legalese. That's why Black's Law Dictionary is a dictionary for lawyers to understand legal terms. So to you and I, the layman, you would think certain words just mean what they say. It's all about deceit. Now, if you know anything about what they call as law, because your third question is, how can you live in a society without a social security number and ID? Well, there's a thing called the Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm syndrome is when a person is being held captive and eventually they start liking and possibly falling in love with their captor. That's what's happened to us over all of these decades of being enslaved by the system. Let's put it this way. If you give in, return your social security number, your birth certificate, all your IDs and become a sovereign free citizen, a, a natural person, there's a difference between person and natural person. Again, if you don't know the definitions, and I will get into it, it's going to put you in a lot of jeopardy when it comes to law. I'm not saying if you call yourself a person in the middle of the street, all of a sudden some cop's going to come beat you up. But if you're in a court system, if you're in a legal battle and you don't know the actual definitions, that's where you get damaged. So when a person says, oh, well, how can I live in a society without a social security number and an ID? Here's where the Stockholm effect comes in. We are so 
conditioned to be part of this corrupt system that the majority of people need it to survive. It's like in the movie The Matrix, where they say most of the people don't want to be unplugged or don't realize they're unplugged, and they will fight to keep that system alive. Why? Because they don't know. So, when it comes to living in a society, you need a social security number to get a job in this corporate corrupt system. You need a driver's license to drive a car in this corrupt system. Now, think of it this way. If you are locked up and in jail, well, you're dependent on the people to let you out to go exercise, to go eat, to go take a shower, to get medicines if you need it. Now, if you're locked up in that cage, you're not getting any of that stuff on your own. You are relying on the people who work there to provide those things for you on a regular basis. Let's say you're in jail for 20 years. You are so used to them taking care of you that if they opened that cage and said, you're free to go, most people would actually commit another crime to stay in there. And they've done this several times because now they're so used to being conditioned to wake up at a certain time when they're told, to eat at a certain time when they're told, to shower at a certain time when they're told, to have everything provided for them that if you're out on your own, they're so scared to do it at this point. And that's what's happening here. So yes, in this corrupt society, it's going to be very difficult to walk around and get a, a job in a corrupt system without a social security number and identification. The idea is once we all decide that we no longer want to be in the system, that game is no longer required. Let's get into the history of everything. So this way I can really break down everything that you need to know. Now, we're not going to get into all the way back to 500 centuries ago and things like that. I'm only going to be talking about the United States of America. So if you're in another country, some of this stuff is not going to apply to you because different countries have different laws. So if you live outside the United States, the parts that I talk about with admiralty law, that is going to apply because that is the real law. They don't tell you about real law. What they give these days, they call law, but it's nothing more than acts and codes. Well, if you know the hidden meaning behind language, where else can you find an act? How about in a play? Where else can you find a code? Well, if you've ever had a message to decode, codes are hidden messages. So they're telling you right again in hidden in plain sight that what they tell you is supposed to be laws is actually acts and codes. In other words, things that you have to decode, which are hidden secret messages, and acts, which are things that are found in plays. And you have people that are actors. I'll get into that more about the meaning of things. So let's start out with the Civil War. We're going to start from that point because that's the most relevant. Civil War was us being told was about freeing the slaves. Now that had part to do with it. But if we've learned anything about even recent wars, they need a reason and justification to have a war so they can complete an agenda behind the scenes. Prime example, the Iraq war, we were told that the reason we were going to invade Iraq was because we were looking for weapons of mass destruction. Did they find any? No. Did they continue the war for several years? Yes. What did they do? Well, they changed the government. They got a person out of uh, power that was trying to make their own uh, monetary system backed by gold. We took over their oil. We took over their lithium. We took over their resources. Governments will lie to you and tell you a reason why they're going there to justify it. Because if, for example, in the Iraq war, if President Bush just came out and said, well, this country might actually damage the dollar because even though the petrodollar is the world currency and it's based on a, nothing more than debt, this particular person that's running the country is trying to create his own currency backed by gold, which they have the right to do because they're a sovereign free land, but it could damage us. And we're going to take their oil and their resources and kill a bunch of their people to do it. How many of uh, the Americans and people would say, okay, sounds good, go get them. No, they need a reason. 
Just like in World War II, they needed a reason to get the United States into the war, they bombed Pearl Harbor. The purpose of World War II was to create the United Nations. That's a story for another time. I'm not going to get into that. If you don't research stuff, it's irrelevant. Because the problem that most people face, like myself and others who teach this stuff, we get attacked from people who are basing what they hear on their feelings and their emotions and what they've been programmed to think. They don't research and they argue with us. That's like when I gave the example of that first day French student. If he was to argue with the professor that he that the professor doesn't know what he's talking about because the words that were coming out of his mouth, that first day student didn't know and they sounded silly. So it must be crazy. It just means he doesn't understand and it affects the way you've been programmed. It's called normalcy bias. So I can understand why people get angry at people like me and others, or they make fun of it. Because in the regular world, if you've never heard of this stuff before, you're not going to know what to look for. And that's one of the reasons that they trick you. It's like, for example, if you were born and your natural parents gave you up and you were adopted, and you spend your whole life with that adopted family that you thought were your parents. No one tells you you're adopted. You don't know you're adopted. You just think those two people that have raised you your whole life are your parents. Now, let's say you're 18 at that time. Between the age of zero and 18, how many years did you spend looking for your real parents? Well, none. You wouldn't even know they existed because you thought the people that adopted you and you didn't know you were adopted because you were an infant were your real parents. So in other words, you wouldn't search for something you didn't know about. So this information that I'm giving is for, especially for the people who have never heard of this stuff before. You can't search for something you don't know about. But if the on their 18th birthday, if those parents sat that person down and said, listen, I have to let you know, or let's say they were sneaking through their parents' drawer and found adoption papers. The only way you will search for something is if you discover it, or somebody tells you about it. Until then, you don't know about it. And that's why governments throughout the ages have been getting away with what they've been getting away with. Because you don't know about it. And because the governments control the media, the public schools, information, if you'd never heard of it, you're not going to search for it. And that's why the majority of people are more worried about Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, uh, the Super Bowl, baseball, and all American Idol and things that are not important. If they knew about this stuff, they would research it. So that's how they've gotten us for so long. And the reason why a lot of people are waking up now is because the one thing they don't control, which they are trying desperately to control, is the Internet. That's why they're trying to pass things like SOPA and all those other internet restricting laws. If you know what's going on, you know that the last way that we can get out information all over the world instantly is the internet. They're trying to bet their best in their powers to stop that information and control it. Because if you control all the outlets, you can silence people. And that's why for hundreds of years, you know, people will say things like, oh, well, how come we haven't heard anybody talk about this stuff? Well, how many people do you hear on the media talk about 9-11? Now that's, look at the media we have today. Look at the instant messages that we have. And there are how many thousands, if not millions of people that say 9-11 was, was not done the way they said it was. But you don't hear it on the news. They silence it. So that's what today is modern technology with newspapers, with television, with the internet. They silence it. Just imagine 100 years ago when they had horse and buggies, and they only had newspapers. They, it was easy to silence people. That's why you haven't noticed all of the people that tried to help us in this world, the Malcolm X's, the JFK's, the Abraham Lincoln's, the um, Martin Luther King's, the John Lennon's, even people like Michael Jackson, who was trying to talk about the fact of the corruption in the music industry. They get murdered. Bobby Kennedy, I'm sure there's tons of others. That's why most people have never really heard of Nikolai Tesla, what he inventions. I guarantee you most people have never heard of Wilhelm Reich. If you've never heard of him, you might want to look him up and see some of the inventions that he had that could have helped this society. Well, he was thrown in jail and where he died and they burned most of his information. They silence people. So people have been saying this throughout the centuries. It's just easily silenced. That's why we can't let them take the internet. All right. So let's get back to 
the Civil War. You were told that the Civil War was based on slavery. That gives justification for what they do. Now, slavery was a part of it. What they did was they needed a way to not take as much full responsibility for ownership of slaves, but still have them produce the goods and services that the masters needed. Now, all they did was, is they took slavery and enhanced it. They learned how to make slavery better because before that time, for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, if you thought of a slave, you thought of a person maybe in chains, somebody that lived in a locked cage, somebody that maybe had somebody with a whip or a sword or a gun, keeping them from running away, doing labor that they did not want to do willingly. The problem with that is when people know they're slaves, they want to try and escape. So what they did was they discovered a way to make you into a legal slave and give you the illusion of freedom so you don't think you're enslaved. The illusion of freedom. Coke or Pepsi? Diet Coke, regular Coke. Energizer, Duracell. Republican, Democrat. Because in a free society, shouldn't anyone be president? Why is it always Republican and Democrat? So what they're saying is you can choose this evil, corrupt politician on this side or this evil, corrupt person on this side. It's almost like I'm going to punch you in the face. Which hand would you choose to hit you? This hand or this hand? Well, you have the illusion of choice because you could pick which hand is going to punch you, but they're going to punch you and hurt you. So they give you the illusion of freedom. That's why. They slaughtered Native Indians, Mayans, Aztecs. It was the Europeans that came over here to claim this land because before they got here, the people of the land, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Native American Indians, Eskimos, any different culture, they didn't own anything. They were in touch with the land. They were free to roam wherever they wanted. Sometimes there's consequences for that. But the majority of the time, they lived in harmony with the land and within one another. It's when the Europeans came over, slaughtered them all, took over the lands, is when they got people to be conditioned that you need to own a piece of property. Well, you can't take it with you. You can't own it. Ownership is an illusion and a way for them to profit off you. All right. So like I said, this is going to be very detailed because I want people to understand this completely. So. Civil War. Civil War divided the country. It basically had to do with the South no longer wanting to pay taxes and not as much as what the North was doing. It, it didn't have to do with slavery. It actually had to do with taxes. The war cost a lot of money. The country was on the verge of being bankrupt. And what happened was to prevent that bankruptcy from happening, European banks came in and took advantage of a situation and gained control of our country. The Bank of England, which is owned by the Rothschilds, basically came in and on February 21st, 1871, they went to the 42nd Congress and they basically told them, if you don't want to go bankrupt, now of course I don't know word for word, I wasn't there, but basically in a nutshell, the Rothschilds and other owners of international banks said, we will bail you out. We will give you the money preventing you from be being bankrupt. But you have to do what I'm about to explain. So basically, they created the Act of 1871. Now, there's a little bit more before that, but I'll talk about the Act of 1871 first before I talk about some of the amendments. Basically, what happened was the our government our Congress sold out our country and behind our backs without us knowing agreed to accept God knows how many millions of dollars to stay silent. And they created the District of Columbia and they created a new government in the District of Columbia, which is only approximately a 20 square mile radius. And they named it the United States and had that name incorporated. So again, 
I'm not talking about the entire country. I am talking about a name. Now, United States looks very similar to the United States of America. And we've had over 100 plus years of being used to that. Don't let the truth come in the way of a good story. So, what the 42nd Congress did is they created the Act of 1871. They created a new government, and they created the District of Columbia, which is a 20-square-mile radius, and they called that the United States. Anyone in that area of the District of Columbia within that 20-square-mile radius was under the jurisdiction of that new government, of that corporation known as the United States. So now, most people will say, well, I live in California, or I live in New York, or I live 21 miles outside of Washington, D.C. How do I get affected by that? This is how they've done it. Now, let's first get into the amendments. Here is a constitution. So I'm not just making things out of air. We're going to start with the 13th Amendment, okay? And I'm going to read it verbatim. This was December 6th, 1865. So this is what I was talking about. Before the Act of 1871, they already started the process of gearing this up to prepare to enslave us all without us knowing it. So the 13th Amendment, and I'm going to break down the definitions. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, that's very important, except as punishment of crime, also important, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Now let's break that down. Now you notice it doesn't say United States of America. It says the United States. Now, if you look up DC Code Title 28, 3002, Section 15, it will tell, tell you under DC Code that the United States is a corporation. Now I'm talking legal terms. I'm talking about a piece of paper, not the landmass. The United States is not the whole country. It is the 20 square mile area located in Washington, DC. So if you look at that DC code, it will actually show you that it is a corporation. So now 13th Amendment, they're talking about freeing the slaves. Now look at how they define it. They define slavery and they mention involuntary servitude. Now, what does that mean? Involuntary servitude is like, for example, if somebody came along, took somebody out of their bed and forced them to work against their will, that is involuntary servitude. They're asking somebody to serve them without it being their choice. They worded it that way for a reason. Involuntary servitude. Because if you volunteer to serve, well, then you are not a slave, or at least you're just a legal slave. So they word it in a way that if you don't understand it, you can entrap yourself. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, but they also say, except as a punishment for a crime. So in other words, if you're in prison, you're a legal slave. They can do whatever they want. They can tell you to do whatever they want. That's why people that work and they're in jail, they, what do they get? 10 cents an hour to, or 10 cents a day to build license plates, to build chairs, to do all this fr basically free labor. And the government pays for all of the uh, prisoner, the, the prison people that own the prison. They make billions of dollars. They get paid by the federal government and they get free labor. Why do you think there's so many laws that basically are putting more and more people into prison these days? More and more free slaves. But you don't have to be in prison to be a free slave. They just have to trick you into doing it without knowing about it. Okay, so they talk about the, um, it shall exist in the United States, not the United States of America. They are two different things. The United States of America is the landmass. Well, you can, originally they called it the Union States of America. The United States is just Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. 20 square mile radius, and it's a piece of paper that's filed as a registration of a corporation called the United States. So, now they say, or, and now this is, this is the part I want you to hear, shall exist within the United States, or, pay attention to this, any place subject to their jurisdiction. Now, what does that mean, subject to their jurisdiction? Well, first of all, think of a king. 
what does a king have? A king has subjects. And what do the subjects have to do? Subjects have to follow the rules of the king. Because if you don't, you'll either be exiled, imprisoned, you could even be executed. So a subject is basically a follower. Now it says under the subject of their jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means within their range. Now, like I said, the original 42nd Congress sold out our country and created a new country, a corporation located in a 20 square mile radius of Washington, D.C. And anybody living in that was automatically a United States citizen. If you lived outside of the United States, that 20 mile in, uh, radius, technically you are not part of that country. But here's how they get you. And they use the word jurisdiction. Now. Let's go to the 14th Amendment, right here, okay? That was created July 9th, 1868. Now let's read this and I'll break it down. All persons, now it doesn't say natural persons, it says persons. Now you just think that means you and I, we're people, we're persons. There's a legal definition for that, which I'm gonna describe after I read this. I'm gonna break this down so you understand what language they're talking, because it's not English, it's legalese. All persons born or naturalized in the United States, again, not the United States of America, but the United States. So all persons born or naturalized in the United States and, again, subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any laws which shall abridge the privileges. We don't have rights. We have privileges. So let's break this down. All persons. So let's start by taking the Black's Dictionary. Now, again, if you call yourself a person out on the street, it means nothing. But if you don't know what person means in law, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So this is where it, it comes into play. Persons. The living body of a human being, an entity such as a corporation that is recognized by law as having most of the rights and duties of a human being. In this sense, the term includes partnerships and other associations, whether incorporated or unincorporated. In a nutshell, you are also a corporation. And like I talked about in the beginning of this video, corporations have owners so you are owned and i'm going to explain not you the person your name is a corporation and i'll explain how they create that but let's first get into the fact of citizen because how many people will say they're a u.s citizen without knowing what it means and i love the people that say oh i'm a sovereign citizen that to me says they haven't studied the term Saying you're a sovereign citizen is just like saying that you are a free slave. It doesn't make sense, does it? Well, because you understand what that means. Let's go over the term of citizen so you know what you are saying legally. Okay, a citizen starts out with a person. Now, we've already looked up person. So right there, if you don't research, you're not going to know what it means. And that's how they trick you. It's by going back and forth. So it starts out as a person or corporation who is, by either birth or naturalization, is a member of a political community, owning allegiance to the community and being entitled, entitled, it means they're giving you entitlement, in other words, privileges, not rights, entitled to enjoy all its civil rights and protections, a member of the civil state entitled to all its privileges. Okay, so... When they created the 14th Amendment, they created the legal definition of the word citizen. So what they've done is tricked you into thinking you need to become a citizen. Now, when you're a citizen, what you are basically doing is, is you are going from a free person of the land to an employee of a corporation known as the United States, which means you are now, when you say you are a citizen, you are now under the jurisdiction of that 20 square mile area of Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, 
and the corporation known as the United States. So now you are subject to their jurisdiction. But that's basically, like I said in other videos, it, let's say if you wanted to join the NRA, let's just assume the NRA is in Washington state and you live in New York and you want to have their membership and be part of the NRA. Does that mean you have to move to Washington to get all their information, all their brochures and be a part of it? No, you send in whatever your membership card, you send in uh, what well, you send in the fee. They send you a membership card. Now you are in their jurisdiction, which means you don't have to live in the particular area to qualify to be a part of something. So the way they trick you is they have you nominate yourself as a citizen. Once you're a citizen, you are now a legal person, which is defined as a corporation. Now, this is how they do it. Let's break it down even further. Let's get into your birth certificate. This is how they start this out, because it's, it's been happening for a long enough time for your father's father has been doing this. Okay. Um, do I need to get into the 15th Amendment first? Uh... Let me get into the 15th Amendment first before we get into the birth certificate. Okay, 15th, 15th Amendment. That was on February 3rd, 1870, right before the Act of 1871. The rights of citizens, now we've already described that, citizens are persons, persons are corporations, of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. So what they're telling you is they gave you in the 15th Amendment the citizen's right to vote. So in other words, to be able to vote for the country and the corporation known as the United States located in Washington, D.C.'s 20 square mile radius, District of Columbia, you had to become a U.S. citizen, which means you are now under the jurisdiction of that little area. So you've basically created treason. You've committed treason against your natural born sovereign country of America decided to unknowingly join that little country in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, and become a U.S. citizen. You're no longer an American. You're a U.S. citizen. So if you've ever registered to vote, if you've ever paid taxes, if you've ever had a driver's license, what's one of the first things that they ask you to check? Are you a U.S. citizen? When you write yes, you have now subject to yourself of the jurisdiction of that corporate entity without knowing it because they're definitely not going to tell you. Now, it's all based on trickery. And I'm going to use a hypothetical situation. I'm not saying this exists. But if you know anything about the history of the origin of vampires, vampires cannot enter someone's house unless they are invited in. I don't know why. That's just, I think it's symbolism to tell you about what governments are doing and how they get away with it. So they use allegories. It's in the Bible. It's in movies. It's all over the place. Allegories are everywhere. They're, they're stories that the ignorant thinkers entertainment and the smart know as hidden information. So a vampire can come to your door. Now, if a vampire said to you, hi, I'm a vampire. If you let me in, I'm going to attack you, suck your blood and kill you. How many of you would actually let them in? Probably not very many. So what they do is they trick you. They make you invite them in, not knowing who they are. So you've invited them in, but they did it in a sneaky, dishonest way. So let's say there's a vampire. And again, I'm not saying it's real. This is just meant as an allegory. Let's say a vampire dresses up as an electrician and says, hi, I got a call that you were having problems, or they'll just say, we're having problems in the area. I need to come into your house to test your electric your circuits. And you turn around and say, oh, okay, come on in. Well, now you've invited that person in. Now he can kill you, he could suck your blood, he could do whatever he wants to you. But he couldn't have done it without your permission. But because you didn't know that person was a vampire and he tricked you, well, you still pay the ultimate price. So that's an allegory in how governments have tricked you into giving away your sovereign, free, natural rights and becoming a entity of a corporation known as the United States and becoming a United States citizen. You've given up your rights to allow yourself to be part of a company and now have privileges. So let's get back into the birth certificate. This is where it all starts. Now, um, 
before 1921, there were no birth certificates. There was no registration of births. What would happen is families would basically enter in the family's names of the people that were born, marriages and even deaths. They would basically put them in their family Bibles. This was actually considered lawful way to record births. There was no requirement of the federal government. Between 1921 and 1933, people started registering birth certificates, marriages, deaths with the government, but yet it was not a law. It was not required, but people were starting to get trained. The way to create a law that entraps people is first, you have to get them used to it a little bit. So it takes a while. 1933, our government went bankrupt for the final time. Now, what happened was after 1933, when Roosevelt confiscated all of the people's gold, we ran out of money. After that, all new money had to be borrowed into existence. Now, all states started issuing serial numbered, social security numbers, certified warehouse receipts for births, marriages, deaths, to pledge people as collateral against any new loans. Let's get into your birth certificate so you can understand what that means and why you are not who you think you are and what you're told you are. And there's a difference between you, the natural person, and the way they've tricked you into legally defining you as dead. The real law of the planet is admiralty law, law of the sea. And it doesn't literally mean it has to literally be in the water for it to qualify. It is all based on hypothetical situations that they can get around. Now, I'm not an expert in everything, so I'm not going to know exactly everything, but I'm giving you the 101 versions of everything. So, Admiralty Law is Law of the Sea, and I'm going to give you a whole information that is either one hell of a coincidence, everything I'm about to say, or it actually has meaning. Again, hidden in plain sight. Now, before I get into the birth certificate, let's talk a little bit about what hidden in plain sight means, so you can understand that. This is how you can get information from people without anybody else knowing about it. Let's say, you and I live in New York City, and I discover that I get inside information that they're going to nuke New York City on a certain day. And I tell you, well, I can't tell the world about it. I'm only going to tell you. I'm going to save you. And I'm going to leave a symbol that will, once you see it, you'll know to leave because the next day the city is going to be bombed. So let's say I say, all right. Every day, I want you to go to Madison Square Garden. And if you see on the Madison Square Garden um, sign, if you see a Donald Duck doll hanging from that sign, that means get out of the city because the next day they're going to bomb it. Now, if you walk there every day and you don't see the Donald Duck, you know that nothing's going to happen. One day you walk up there and you look up and you see a Donald Duck doll hanging from the sign. You know that's code for you to leave. Now, how many millions of people live in New York? How many thousands of people walk past that sign every day? Let's just assume some of the people look up and they're like, wow, what is there a Donald Duck doing hanging on that sign? Well, it's right there in front of them. Some people may even acknowledge it, but if they don't know the meaning behind it, it means nothing to them. So that's what I'm talking about with codes and messages and hidden in plain sight, that you could put things right out there in front of people that you and I, or the common person, because not me now, but the average person would see just as words or just as symbols, would just assume that's what they are. And if you don't know the meanings, whose fault is it? Because all the people that didn't know that that hanging of the dot, that Donald Duck hanging from that sign meant that the next day Manhattan was going to be nuked. Well, anybody that stayed there, not going to be there for much longer. So. You don't know what's going on. You suffer in the long run. And again, I'm only talking legally. So without further ado, let's get into the birth certificate. Admiralty law comes into play when it comes to your birth certificate. And there's a lot of symbolism and phonetics in words. And when I start mentioning them, you're going to see that, like I said, it's either one hell of a coincidence or it actually means something. And they're trying to tell you if you're smart enough to decode it. So birth certificates they didn't just create that word for no reason before planes before trains before anything 
when one country wanted to, to send products to another country, when they were doing commerce, they would send them via ship. When a, when a boat comes to shore, it docks. Okay. A boat is a vessel. So they, when a boat docks to the shore with its products, okay, it is called, it's reached its birth. Now it's not B-I-R-T-H, it's B-E-R-T-H, but it's, it's birthing, which means the ship has now arrived. When the captain of that ship wants to bring all of their goods off the boat into the new country, they have to first show a certificate of manifest to show uh, the identity and the items on the ship. Now, your certificate of manifest is going to show the name of the product, its registration number, country of origin, etc., giving information. So it's being birthed from the vessel to the dock. So your birth certificate is your certificate of manifest. Your social security number is your registration number. Now, if you think about it, we talk about actual phonetics. Okay. A woman is the ship. Not literally. Because if you know anything about nautical terms, well, what do they always call a boat? They call it a she. And they always name it on the escutcheon. Well, if you know what an escutcheon is, if you've ever seen it in a court or anywhere where a family crest is, that little area that's holding the family crest, in other words, the family name, is called the escutcheon. So you, when you're in your mother's womb, you are in basically her birth canal. Well, you're coming out of her birth canal, but you are in ambiotic fluid. In other words, you are in water. You are connected to the mothership. Interesting choice of words that they use for that, the mothership, through an umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is connected to her navel. Well, if you know about the military of the sea, it is called the navy. Now, I'm not saying navel and navy are the same word. I'm saying phonetically, they're associating navel with navy. So you are in water. When you are birthed, you are birthed through a vessel. She is the vessel of the carrying of the product, which is the child. Birth through the birth canal, where you are delivered by a doctor or a doc. Again, I'm not saying when a ship docks, it's not the same as a doctor. I'm talking about the similarity, similarity in the phonetics. So you come from water onto dry land. You come from a birth canal that was submerged in water into dry land where they cut the umbilical cord. They create a certificate of live birth because you are a live human being at that point. Let's say your name is John Smith. When you are born through that womb, through the doctor, they create a manifest. They call it a certificate of live birth. They talk about the parents, in other words, like the country of origin. They give you a social security number. They have the parents sign it over and they send that into the federal government in the United States. You get back a birth certificate, not a certificate of live birth, a birth certificate, just like a ship only they change the name from B-E-R-T-H to B-I-R-T-H. Again, hidden in plain sight. Now, what happens is originally what they would do is when you're born, they would put it in the newspaper. Now, because of computers, they do everything on the computer. I think it's through human resources. I don't have that information. Somebody would have to mention it if they know about it. But what they basically do is when you're born, they take on the bottom of your foot, What's the bottom of your foot? Your soul. And they extract blood. They also take the mother's placenta. Now, what is in both of those? Your DNA. Your DNA is the physical proof of evidence of who you are. 
it's very funny that they take blood out of the bottom of the foot and at the bottom of the foot is called your soul. So they're basically taking your d DNA evidence of you out of your soul. So let's get a little bit into the phonetics before I continue with what they do. Because like I said, you are it's going through a birth canal through your mother who's a vestal, vessel. She's the, cap, she's the ship. You're the product. You are delivered. Now, what else can be delivered? Well, a package can be delivered, can it? It's the same thing. And when you are on a ship, well, what else can be shipped? A package. Let's get through some of it. Because if you think about even when it comes to money, I'm going to show you how it has to do with actual admiralty law. Where do you get money? You get money from a bank. Where else can you find a bank? Well, you can find a bank on either side of a river. You have river banks. Now, what does a river do? A river flows to the sea. What's another name for flow? Well, current. So what does a river do? It flows to the sea or current sea. What's another name for money? Current sea. So let's get into the whole fact of when you are born, they make a certificate of live birth which you just think is just them registering your name so they can keep a tab of who is a person in the United States. What they do is they first, they extract your DNA and then they post your name on, in the newspaper. And then they, now they do it. I think it's through human resources, but they're basically, what they're doing is they're, they're basically saying, we found this DNA from this particular individual. Can somebody please claim it? It's like a lost and found. And when nobody comes to claim it, because you don't know you're supposed to, because they don't tell you about this, they're basically committing fraud. And what they do is they legally pronounce you dead at sea. And they create a fictional character, a corporation known as a person, John Smith. So when they write that birth certificate, you're going to see your name most of the time. 99 out of 100 people are going to have capital letters. If it's not, that means you either know somebody in government, somebody in your family has been in government, or you're a very wealthy person. There's always exceptions to every rule. But the majority of the masses of people, when they look at their identification and their birth certificate, they're going to see it in all capital letters. That's a corporation. So it's like, for example, if you've ever watched the show Gilligan's Island, all those people got stranded on a desert island for years. Now, in government, they would have actually declared them legally dead. Now, that doesn't mean they're dead. That just means legal dead. There's a difference between a person that's really dead and a person that's legally dead, just like a person who is blind and a person that's legally blind. A person that's legally blind can still technically see, but there's a certain level where legally it's defined as blind. So there's a difference between regular terms and legal terms. So if I said to somebody, you're considered dead, you're going to think that's a ridiculous statement because, well, I'm alive, legally dead. So when you don't, when your parents don't make this claim for this birth, birthing, and they don't make the claim for the DNA, the government, after I think a certain amount of days, I don't know how many, it's irrelevant, but they say, okay, nobody came to claim this DNA. We're going to make a legal corporate account under that name. And again, let's assume the person's name is John Smith. Now, wh why is DNA important? Because DNA is proof of who you are. Because you can say, hi, my name is John Smith. Well, without any proof, isn't that nothing more than hearsay? And you could say, well, I have a driver's license that says John Smith. Well, has anyone ever used someone else's ID before? Does that guarantee it proves who you are? You could have made a fake ID. How does that guarantee? You could say, well, my parents call me that. Well, could you make parents lie for you? and say your name is something else, if they cared for you enough, of course they can. So that's all hearsay. And when I'm talking about a court, they want physical proof. The only thing that could actually physically prove who you are is your DNA, because your DNA is different than anybody else's on the world and probably in the universe. So it's a way to be able to prove legally who you are. Well, when you're born, they take ownership of that DNA and they don't tell you. So basically what's happening is they're committing fraud because let's put it this way. There's a thing in law where it's full disclosure of information that can protect you from somebody trying to lie and scam you. In other words, let's say for example, you wanna go buy a brand new car 
and you look in through this one particular dealership, I'm not going to say any name of a car, and you find the car of your dreams. It's $30,000. It's everything you want. You took it for a test drive, and you loved everything about it, and they're like, this is the car I want. I got the $30,000 right here. I want this car. And they say, okay, sign here. And they say, by next week, we will have it delivered to you. So you sign the contract. You think you are going to buy that very car that you drove off the lot, well, that you're driving around test driving. A week later, they tow the car to your house. You try and start it. It doesn't start. You lift up the hood and find out there's no engine. Now you're furious. You just spent $30,000 with a car with no engine. You go back to the dealership and you say to them, I bought this car. It has no engine. What are you doing? And they turn around and say, well, sorry, you signed a contract, so you're stuck with it. Well, no, because they didn't give you the full disclosure. In other words, if they would have said to you, this car that you test drive is not going to be the one we're going to sell you. Or before you sign, we're going to let you know that the car that you just drove, the one that you think you're buying, we're going to take the engine out and deliver it to you without an engine, but still charge the same price as if it had one. Sign here. Would you sign? Of course not because you've been given full disclosure. This is where the governments throughout the world trick you. They don't tell you this, so they're not giving you full disclosure. So technically we have a case against them for committing fraud and lying to us. But the reason they get away with it is because no one knew about it. You can't argue what you don't know about. Just like I said earlier in this video, where if you're adopted and don't know it, well, how can you search for parents you didn't know existed? That's how they trick you. So let's get into the fact that when they create this corporation, Again, like I said earlier in the video, a corporation has stock owners, has owners. So you're owned. You have stock in your name that's traded on the New York Stock Exchange. You are a property that is owned by people because it's based on the fact that our country went bankrupt in 1933 and they needed collateral for the loans. You are their collateral. Not you, the person, but you, the fake name that they incorporated. Because again, that's the corporation. Like, for example, if you think about Walmart or McDonald's, Walmart and McDonald's, the corporation is not the buildings. It's not the CEO headquarters. It's just the registered name. So John Smith, in all capital letters, on a federal ID in law, is a corporation, which means it has owners, your stock. That's why if you'll hear these phrases, it's going to sound very familiar to business and also law of the sea, admiralty law. Because when you're spending time with people that you like, you say, well, they're good company. Good company. If you've ever had two wealthy people get married, you ever hear of people say, oh, they're good stock. What about if you try and get a job where you need to learn how to do it? Well, you're earning a trade. Well, what do you do with stocks? You trade them. Do you ever have somebody that you're having a conversation with and have somebody eavesdrop on you? What do you say? Mind your own business. Marriages are nothing more than the merger of two corporations. That's why you need a marriage license. Having a baby is a product from those two corporations. It's like all of a sudden... If McDonald's and Burger King decided to merge into one company, well, they need a, a license to do that, and they become one corporate entity. Whatever their product is, is what they're birthing. That's the, that's the baby. Now, I'm not talking the live human being. I'm talking about the corporation that they create with the same name. Because if your name is John Smith, and you see a birth certificate that says John Smith in all capital letters, you assume that's you. You know what happens when you assume. So let's get into some of the phrases that you'll see that have to do with admiralty law. and You just don't know it. We use this in everyday life when it comes to business. Well, if you have a lot of bills, you could be drowning in debt. Um, you ever had somebody have a breach of contract? Well, what do pirates do when they go to another ship? They breach it. What about if you're backed up on your mortgage payment? Well, your house is underwater. Have you ever had a uh, liquidation sale? Or what about if you're trying to get a bunch of people to, uh, to go in for a lottery ticket? What do they do? They pool the money. Have you ever had a subprime mortgage? Submarine, subprime mortgage. Have you ever been deep in debt? 
or swimming in debt? Have you ever been sailing along in life? Or coasting by? Or what about if you're about to get a loan and they waive the fees? You know, wave, ocean wave. Or what if you're going to harbor something, like harbor a criminal? If you're just getting by, have you ever heard anyone say, I'm just staying afloat? Or let's say tomorrow you end up winning the lottery. Somebody will say, oh, your ship has come in. When you die, you keel over. You could say you keeled over. Well, a keel is a part of a ship. If you wanted to do something and you decide, I changed my mind, I don't want to do it, you could bow out. Well, what's a bow on a ship? Um, if you invested all your money into something and you lost it, well, you sunk all of your money into a business and it failed. Have you ever been swamped in debt? I'll, I can go on. Also, let's talk about things that have to do with ship. About relationship, companionship, friendship, dictatorship, starship, spaceship, membership, fellowship, scholarship, citizenship, showmanship, censorship, rulership, gunship, courtship, flagship, lordship. Get it? It's all about having it right in front of you so you don't understand it. They all have to do with boats or the sea. Coincidence? Sure could be. All right. So get back to the birth certificate. So your parents, which are two separate corporations, and if they get married, they're merging, which they need a marriage license. They create a product, your child, and they birth it through a birthing canal. They're coming from water onto dry land where they disconnect the navel, uh, the umbilical cord, which is connected to the navel. Again, Navy C. They create a certificate of live birth. Your parents sign it, and it is authorized and witnessed by a doctor. So the boat has docked. It has delivered its package. That's why you're in a delivery room. They give you back. They basically take, they extract your DNA from the bottom of your foot, your soul. They take the placenta. Now, they don't take the actual placenta. They just extract a little bit of DNA. Your whole amount of DNA could fit on the needle-sized pin. So it's not like they have a whole bunch of of placentas in a room. They just extract the DNA from it. And they create a birth certificate. What they do is they announce, and that when people don't claim ownership of that DNA, because they don't know they're supposed to, because they don't tell you, because let's put it this way, if a doctor said to you after you were, let's say you're the mother, and the, the doctor says to you, all right, I want you to sign this birth certificate, but before you do, I just want to let you know that what's going to happen is, is we're going to make a corporation in your child's name where we are going to use it as collateral so we can create more debt. Your child is going to spend his whole life having to pay income taxes, uh, different fees. You're going to have to follow our rules, and it becomes a dead fictional corporate entity where he will be basically enslaved through servitude, voluntary servitude, and he will spend his whole life being not what he thinks he is. Sign here. How many of you would you actually do that and do that to your children? Well, the reason you sign that birth certificate is because they don't tell you any of this stuff. They're committing fraud. They're not giving full disclosure. So once you get that, your birth certificate, you are now a registered product of the corporation known as the United States, which is located in the District of Columbia, 20 square mile radius. And because you have that information, you are now part of the corporation. So when you get a driver's license, what do you use as your identification? Well, you use your birth certificate. So you're using a piece of paper that's confirming that you are part of a corporation and you become a U.S. citizen and you become a legal person. And this is how they enslave people. So people can say, oh, what's the difference between a country and a corporation? Well, a country, you're a free sovereign person that can travel the land anywhere you want as long as you're not infringing on the rights of others. With the corporation, you have to do what they tell you. Let's say you work for Walmart. If you work for Walmart, if you want to get paid, let's say Walmart is the only job around and you need to work to pay, pay your bills and buy food. So you need this job. Well, if you want to work for Walmart, you have to follow their rules. So if they tell you you have to wear a uniform, 
Well, if you want to get paid, you have to wear the uniform. If they tell you you have to scrub toilets, if you want the job and you want the money, you will do what they say. Now, they are also responsible for you. So if you slip and fall in Walmart, they have to be liable. They will pay for the damages. So they want to make sure you're careful. So they set rules of things that you can and cannot do. For example, you can't go around as a Walmart uh, employee punching customers because that can create a fight. Things can get damaged and the corporation is liable. So they create rules. So if you punch a, a customer, you're going to be fired, which means you no longer get the money and the access to what their goods and services are, their money, their whatever, the, the, the benefits that they give that you need to survive. So they make rules and you could be punished. Let's say, for example, you work the register and every day for a week, your draw is $100 short. Well, they can take it out of your pay. Complain all you want. They'll fire you. So when you're under their rules, when you're under their employment, you're under their rules. You have to do what they say. And that's the difference between a sovereign free person, a natural person, because there's a difference between a natural person and a person. A person is a corporation. A natural person is an actual live human being, a sovereign person a sovereign human lost my train of thought all right so basically what's happening is is your government has lied to you they have created a phony fictional character with your name on it which you assume is you which means you are now a part of that corporation and you are a stock you are traded on the stock market, not you, the actual person, your corporate name that you assume is you. So when you got a driver's license, when you registered to vote, when you paid taxes, you have now volunteered your servitude. Remember when I talked about that before in the 13th Amendment about slavery? You have volunteered to serve for this corporation. But like with the vampire who tricked you, your government tricked you into serving a foreign country, a corporation, and you are basically a traitor, and you're not who you think you are. Now, again, these things are all found in Black's Law Dictionary, DC Code. Like, for example, if you want to look up, you can get a pen and paper, DC Code 7-241 under definitions. Okay, agency. Under the law, under DC Code, the word agency means an agency, department, unit, or instrumentally, or instrumentally of the District of Columbia government. So if you're an agent of something, you're actually, that means under law, you're a part of this little 20 square mile radius. You're under their jurisdiction. You're subject to it. An individual is a single person. So person we know is a corporation. So if you're listed somewhere on a document, a federal document or a government document that lists you as an individual, well, legally, that means you're a single person, which means you are a corporation. If you are no, if you are listed as an identified individual, that means you're a natural person. Let's go under DC Code 7-621 under definitions. A physician, legal terms, is a person authorized to practice medicine in the District of Columbia. Well, if you are a physician anywhere else and you are a U.S. citizen, you're under their jurisdiction. See how it all goes back to the same thing? If you look under DC Code 7-201 in definitions sub part 10, it will show the, the, the actual proof that a person is a corporation. Um, if you look at the DC Code um, Title 28, uh, 3002, Section 15, A, B, and C, they talk about the United States as a corporation. And just before it, in Section 14, they have the definition of a state. The state is basically an entity of the United States. In other words, states are franchises. So if you live, let's say, for example, let's go with McDonald's. McDonald's, let's say their corporate headquarters is in um, New York City. I don't know where it is. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. You have McDonald's in Florida. You have McDonald's in California. You have McDonald's in Alaska. You have McDonald's in France. They can't just all of a sudden in any of those places decide, oh, I'm going to sell Kentucky Fried Chicken or I'm going to sell Burger King or I'm going to sell Hammers. 
They have to do what the corporate headquarters located in Manhattan says because they are under their jurisdiction. They're just not in the same areas. That's exactly what states are, according to law. So if you live in New York State, New York State is not the landmass. Hold on. That's the corporation known as New York, the state of New York. It just says the name New York. It's a registered name that's filed in Washington, D.C. So the states are franchises because the original states were called union states. They were free from, they were basically individual com countries and they were eventually united. That's why they were called the United States of America because what was the landmass called? America or North America. And what were they? They were states. And what did they do? They united. United States of America. All they did was, in 1871, is create the District of Columbia and created a corporation known as the United States. You've just been conditioned because you've heard that all your life. Tell a lie long enough, it becomes truth. So I'm going to pretty much end this video here. There are other videos that I talk about in further detail, but I wanted to get the majority of what's going on in one video so you can get a clear picture of what happened to you why it happened to you. Now, but actually, before I do that, how do you get out of it? Well, the Constitution, not the original Constitution that was created in 1789, which was the Constitution for the people of the United States of America, which means the, the we, the people, told the government what to do. They changed it to the Constitution of the United States, not the country, the corporation. So they redid it in 1871. They rewrote the Constitution and created a, con a second Constitution for the District of Columbia 20 square mile radius known as the United States. That Constitution is only in effect because of the consent of the governed. Silence can equal consent. And I've used this example, but I'll use it here again just in case. Let's say a bunch of us are going to dinner and we've all agreed that we're going to pay our separate ways. And we get our dinner, get our drinks, eat our dinner, finish our drinks. And at the end, we have a dessert. We all decide, you know what? Let's order a cake. Let's say there's 10 of us. They cut the cake into ends up 11 pieces. And there's one piece left over. I, I finish before everybody else. Now, under the law, if I want that piece, I can make a legal claim for it. And I say to everybody, I'm going to take that last piece of cake. So in law... I am making a legal claim for that cake. I would become the executor of that trust, the other people, and also the beneficiary, because obviously I would benefit from having that piece of cake. The other people would become trustees in trust law. So I'm the executive or the administrator of that trust. In other words, I'm creating that trust. I also am the beneficiary of that trust because I am benefiting from getting that cake. And the trustees are the people that witness it. They have no involvement. Now, if I make a legal claim for that piece of cake, everybody else can say, go ahead and take it, or no, you can't take it, or let's cut it up, or whatever. But if they all don't react to my claim, and let's assume they all heard what I said, and they just ignore it, and they don't say anything, under law, I now have the right to take it because of their silence. It means they did not dispute it. In other words, they didn't say, no, you can't take it. So the silence in law is the same as consenting to that request. So because the Constitution, this made up Constitution, the second Constitution that was created for the District of Columbia, known as the Corporation of the United States, it only is in effect because of the consent of the governed. We are the governed. So because we don't argue it, it stays in effect. The reason we don't argue it, it's just like I said in the beginning, where if you don't know you were adopted, you're never going to seek your natural parents because you don't know they exist. Why? Because you didn't find out about it or you weren't told about it. So because you don't know what legal citizen meant, and because you didn't know what legal person meant, and you didn't know the definition of slavery as involuntary servitude, and you decided to become a U.S. citizen without knowing what that meant, you have served and you are giving your consent because no one is arguing it or not enough people are arguing it. Basically, if 
51% of the people of the United States of America all decided to say, we are going to waive our benefits and privileges and no longer consent to this phony, made-up, lying document, it would no longer have any hold. And we would not have to pull a trigger. We would not have to shoot anyone. We would not have to hurt anyone. We would not have to cause threats. It's just like, for example, if that vampire knocked on the door and you knew that person was a, a vampire and the only way they can get you is if you invited them in, well, all you have to do is just not invite them in. Saying nothing, turning your back, shutting the door. There has, there's no fight involved because under the law, whatever it is, the reason that they can't get you, I don't know. But they're saying is a vampire cannot come into your home without being invited. So the only way they can be invited in or you'll willingly invite them is to trick you. So if the people realize what's going on, and this is why I want this video spread, and this is why I want this information out, because I've been hearing from people that my other videos are being silenced because they don't want this information out, that once the majority of the people of this country, all around the world, the majority of the people say we no longer consent, their game is over. The only reason it continues is because we don't argue it. And that's why they have tell a vision. That's why they own the public schools. That's why they own the media, except for the internet. Now you can understand why they're trying to get rid of it so much, because they don't want this information out. They want it controlled. You control the outlet of information. You control what comes in and what goes out. And they can make up any story they want. Like I said, they told you that the Civil War was based on the fact of just freeing slaves. They also told you that the Iraq War was based on weapons of mass destruction. They don't ever tell you the truth because if they told you the truth, you would not accept it. And that's why, like when they tried to do the, the, the recent event with Syria, people are starting to wake up and realize what's going on. Notice they didn't attack Syria. Why? Because we didn't give them the consent. And we are more powerful than you think. So when people say things like, how do we get ourselves out of the system? Well, one or two people may get out of the system here and there, but it doesn't change the whole thing because the whole thing is corrupt because of the lie and because we have been assuming what certain things meant. Ignorance in the law is no excuse. So if we wake up and say we no longer consent, we're all out of the system. And then we create a new way of life. Now, what do I know what that is? I don't know. But it's like, for example, if you're a prisoner, excuse me, you're used to being fed, you're used to being taken care of. If all of a sudden you open the gate after 30 years of being in jail and being taken care of, and they say, you're free to go, you're going to be scared to death. You have no job. You haven't seen outside world in three decades. You're going to be scared. You might actually tell them, close the door. And that's what's happening with us. We want them to enslave us and take care of us. That's why we have welfare. That's why we have all these things. But we can also be punished. We can also be executed. We can also be imprisoned if we don't follow their rules. So people have this attitude of thinking, well, as long as I get mine, it'll be okay. Well, you notice throughout history, all world, all different kingdoms, countries, nations, they all collapse. Why? Because the people at the top get so greedy and they steal so much, eventually it topples over and everybody suffers. So we're either the exception to the rule throughout recorded history or we're going to repeat what everybody else has done, which means eventually this collapses and everybody suffers. Now, do you think the really rich and the really prepared are going to be suffering? Or do you think it's going to be the masses that are living day to day, dependent on the government to take care of them? And when the gov government fails and the monetary system fails and you no longer have your medications from the government or you no longer have your Social Security check or your welfare check and you have no actual skill or trade, what do you do? So, so many people will actually fight for that system to keep it alive. And as long as you make a little bit of fiat dollars, little fake debt notes, you think you're doing good. But you're just creating the slave system. You're keeping it alive. You're keeping the giant alive. So in the long run, you're hurting your children. You're hurting their children. And eventually, it all comes crumbling down. So we are always waiting for these politicians to help us. These politicians are part of this system. They pretty much know what's going on, and that's how they word things. Like I had videos actually catching the lie, because if you don't know what's going on, you'll miss just basic words. Or watch a movie and you see something that is in code that you don't understand. 
allegory, even like the Bible. The Bible even says it's allegory, which means it's not meant to be taken literally. It's coded messages to the ignorant or the naive. It's just a bunch of stories that they end up ultimately believing in because they were programmed to believe it because they were programmed year after year, day after day. And eventually you tell a lie long enough, it becomes the truth. So when everybody out there starts spreading this information, starts really learning, get yourself a Black's Law Dictionary. Look at the Constitution. Look up those DC codes I talked to you about. See it for yourself. This is not some conspiracy theory. The only reason conspiracy theory is so evil as it sounds and people think it's associated with crazy people is the fact that the media, which is bought and paid for by the government, has made it into the scary thing. Because people say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, if anybody just knew that the definition of conspiracy is just when two or more people conspire to do something, it doesn't sound so scary. But if you want to continue to be programmed and distracted, make a little bit of fake fiat dollars, not realizing that for every dollar created, there creates debt, which we have to pay back. And how do we pay back for it? With our labor. So what is the purpose of a slave? Purpose of a slave is for a master to get somebody else to do the work for them. What are we spending our whole lives doing? Borrowing money, which creates debt. They create their money. It's not money, it's currency. Money is not what they give us. Not since 1933. They're giving us numbers on a computer screen. The Federal Reserve, which is owned by the shareholders of major banks, and places like Goldman Sachs, they own the Federal Reserve, who bailed themselves out. So when you write a check, you have to make sure you have that money in the bank. Otherwise, that check bounces. Well, when banks want to borrow money from the Federal Reserve, and they write them a check or send them a digital number, they have no money in their account. They're just making up invisible numbers. They loan those out to you and I. They don't give us money. Like if you want to buy a car for $30,000, and you go to the bank to get a $30,000 loan, they don't push $30,000 in $1 bills or $100 bills to you. They write you a check. So they're giving you nothing. But you have to spend the rest of your life working and using your labor to be able to pay back in real actual dollars that amount plus interest. That is a Ponzi scheme because what they don't tell you is, is they create money only to the point of the principal. They don't include the interest. So if you paid off the debt completely, there would be no money left in existence to pay off the interest. So that's why every year they have to raise the debt ceiling. It's because they get to a point where they've reached the principal amount and they don't have enough money to pay for the interest because they don't create that money. So they have to borrow more money on top of that. But that creates more interest. And it goes on and on and on until one day it collapses in on itself. Can it happen tomorrow? Sure. Could it happen in 100 years? Sure. But like the people on Pompeii who lived with an active volcano that didn't erupt for thousands of years, it only takes one tragic event to destroy a nation. So if you want to take that chance, please do nothing and just hope that your time is not now that this stuff occurs. If you research history and really research history, not just what you program through a government owned public school, because if you are a U.S. senator, if you are a U.S. Postal Service man, if you are a United States Marine, you are not protecting the country of North America. You are protecting the corporate interest in the District of Columbia. So if you're a policeman, if you're a military soldier, you're serving a corporation. You're protecting the fake constitution, not the real one that was created in 1789. So they're using you and they're using you by taking the punishment of the people. So like, for example, if a cop pepper sprays somebody or abuses them, people will say, oh, that's cruel. How could he get away with that? Well, you're legally dead. Now, again, I'm not saying you're, I'm not dead. I'm alive. You see, I'm talking. I'm alive. But under the law, I'm legally dead. Zombie. You ever wonder why they make so many zombie movies? 
Those zombie movies are actually making fun of you. You're the zombie. You're the living dead. That's why when a person is about to be executed, when they walk down to the execution chamber, what do the prisoners all say? Dead man walking. Well, what's the most popular zombie movie these days? Walking Dead? They're talking about you, your fictional character. So when a cop is beating up a citizen or a person, they're beating up their property. They have every right to do it, even though it doesn't sound right. And I'll give you a prime example of what that means. If you own a television, you bought and paid for your television. Can you get in trouble for smashing it? Of course not. It's your piece of property. You can't get thrown in jail for murdering a TV. It's a property. If you have a dog and it's sick and you have to put it down, you're basically murdering it, right? Do you get thrown in jail for that? No. Why? Because your dog is your property. It may be cruel, but it's property. Let's say you're a cattle rancher and you raise cattle to ultimately turn them into steaks and other meats. Well, you can brand that cattle, can't you? Don't you think that'll hurt those animals? They're live animals. It'll hurt them. You get in trouble for it? No, it's your property. What are you ultimately doing when you turn a cow into meat that you sell? Well, you're murdering them. You're killing them. You're executing them. You get thrown in jail for doing that, even though they're live. They're animals. They're living, breathing species of the planet. And you're extinguishing their life by murdering them. You get thrown in jail for that? No. Why? Because they're your property. So when a cop or a soldier or someone in the government decides to throw you in jail, kidnap you, or beat you up, or pepper spray you, or even murder you, they don't get in trouble. That's why they don't get in trouble. Cops don't get thrown in jail. They get the very best, a paid vacation. Why? Because they do that to show face. Because if they really knew that it was just property and they could do whatever they want, people would be outraged and they'd overthrow the government in two seconds. So they have to, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. So sometimes you have to sacrifice a few people. You give them a paid vacation for what they've done. Meanwhile, they've killed your child or your, your, your family member or a friend. Why? Because you're a piece of property and you don't know it. You don't know it. You're legally dead. So cops aren't doing anything out of their jurisdiction because they're part of a corporation, United States policemen or U.S. military. When they go into other countries, all they're doing is, is, is expanding the franchise of, the, of that corporation. And they're killing other people to do it. And you as a soldier, if you're a soldier, you're being used because it's not the government who's making all the money off of this and taking all the resources. They're not the ones putting their life on the line. They're not the one taking other people's lives. They're making you do it. And you think you're doing it to protect your country. So when you, as a policeman or a military man who's given an oath of office, reread your oath of office. It says to protect and serve the United States, not the United States of America, not the country. You're serving the corporation. So when people talk about the United States as a corporation, now you know that it's not the landmass. It's just that one little tiny dot. And they've tricked us all to be part of it because of our ignorance. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You are now no longer ignorant. Now, since I'm not asking for anything, since I've done this because I care about my fellow human beings, because if I help everybody else to awaken and they end up deciding we no longer consent to this lie, well, it helps me, doesn't it? So that's my reward. The only thing I ask for is for you all to share this video, to make someone else watch it, because YouTube is silencing videos like this. They don't want this out. And if one day they take control of the Internet, this information is no longer able to come out and they can do whatever they want. And if you're tired of them taking your money, because it's not yours, when you put your money in a bank, you're actually giving it back to the Federal Reserve. Because if you look at the dollars, they say Federal Reserve notes, they're debt notes. So the only reason that they get away with it is because when you, let's say you deposit $10,000 Federal Reserve notes into your bank account, they put a digital number that says 10000 on it. They just do that to keep you from saying, hey, where'd all my money go? They're not going to tell you you actually gave it back. When you're done kidding yourself and making fun of this, because I'll have people that will make fun of this and call it crazy. Those are people that are the first day student trying to tell me, the French teacher, that I don't know what I'm talking about because the words that are coming out of my mouth sound crazy. Who the hell do they think they are? They know nothing and they're going to 
base it on either being paid to be part of the system to try and break it down or people that are just so afraid to know the truth that they will do everything to protect it because maybe they're on welfare and they need the system. How many inventions have been stopped because of this corrupt government? How many diseases could have been cured decades or centuries ago? Look at the inventions of really look up Nikolai Tesla. We could have had wireless communication and wireless free electricity in the 1800s. Just imagine where we'd be technologically if we didn't have to pay for electricity and we didn't have all these wires. Storms wouldn't damage it anymore. Look at people like Wilhelm Reich who actually helped cure cancer. He had a machine that could actually cure people. He had a weather manipulation device that could actually create rain. Just imagine if you lived in the desert or you lived in parts of Africa. Don't you think a weather machine that could create weather clouds would come in handy? Well, that person in the 1950s demonstrated his machine and was arrested by the FDA, thrown in jail. His invention was destroyed. His work was destroyed. And most of you have never heard of him. This is what our government does. If this is what you want to be a part of, you know, people say, oh, how could we live without roads and all the things that the government is providing? Yeah, they're giving us a few little carrots. But just imagine if they let all the technology that we've had for centuries happen, we'd be in flying cars right now. We would be having machines that you press a button, it creates food. And you can laugh all you want. If you look at 3D printers today, just with the regular technology that they're allowing us to have, they have a 3D printer that actually can print out food. Right now, it's just candy. But they're taking a 3D printer and creating food. And 3D regular 3D printers that can create actual things. Now, just imagine if we had that technology 100 years ago, where we would be. And we didn't have governments stopping these things from happening by stealing patents and buying patents. Half the inventions that would make this world a much better place. We wouldn't even have to worry about bridges and roads. How we'll never see the light of day under the corporate rule. And that's why when people talk about the president and they talk about the fact that, you know, oh, well, the president can't be president because he was born in Kenya. Well, if you are the owner of Walmart and you ended up wanting to have a president of your corporation, do you care where he comes from? Of course not. Anybody can be who you want in your business to run it. So the president of the United States, Barack Obama, George Bush, Bill Clinton, all of them have been nothing more than a corporate president, president of a corporation. It doesn't matter where they're from. It's irrelevant. If you appreciate this, I ask you to share it. I ask you to give it a thumbs up. I want you to comment. I want you to watch this with other people. I want you to watch this 6,000 times and you get it memorized. If there's something I haven't mentioned you have a question about, you can either email me or watch a bunch of my other videos because there may have been things I've forgotten in this video, even though it's long. And I know some people will say, oh, well, you know, who wants to just stare at a person talking all the time? Well, what'd you do when you were in school? Don't think that you need to always be visually entertained with fancy music and fancy effects. Listen to the words. I'm speaking truth, truth that can be verified. If you're willing to take the effort, they don't want you to do that. They want you to be lazy. They want you to just be taken care of because people they can scare and people they can control, they can do whatever they want with. So if you want to be dependent on a system from a corrupt system, well, now, you know, so now it's your choice. I hope you all decide that it's time that we can make a change because as you see throughout history, Ignorance of the law is no excuse, and if you do not study history, you're doomed to repeat it. And this has happened over and over again with civilization after civilization. We are no exception. And if you think we are, then you have an arrogance that I question. Thank you for watching. Peace.